Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. So it looks like Judy Shelton is one step closer to making it to the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. Very interesting nominee for uh, for the Federal Reserve. Now, this is not what you would typically expect as far as a Federal Reserve member, only because Judy Shelton is a hardcore gold bug, gold standard advocate. I mean, big time. And a lot of people will argue, yeah, but she's a flip-flopper. She was talking about going, you know, lowering interest rates and printing up money and stuff. And I kind of have a thought about that one. It was like, you know, if I was sitting on a huge pile of gold, I would want the Federal Reserve to print up a bunch of money and go negative with the interest rates too. It would only cause the price of gold to skyrocket. You know, you think about this for a little bit. The bond, the U.S. Treasury bond was the most secure safe haven asset known to most investors out there throughout the world. That if you were going to buy anything that paid back an interest rate, the U.S. Treasuries were the number one uh, financial asset to go to. Guaranteed to pay. Zero chance of default. Recognized around the world, accepted around the world almost as if it was a currency. In fact, a lot of people use U.S. Treasuries as a currency because they're so liquidable, meaning you can cash them in easily. And a lot of people loved bonds over gold because gold was a dumb asset. It just sat there. It didn't do anything. It doesn't pay an interest rate. It doesn't pay a dividend. But yet now we're sitting at bond prices being incredibly high and the yields very low. So the interest that you make off of these bonds, these U.S. Treasuries, is very insignificant to what it was in the past. See, in the past, when people used to use this argument that gold was a dumb asset and bonds at least pay, pay an interest rate, that's when they used to pay an interest rate. Now, a 10-year Treasury pay, pays like 0.6, has a yield of 0.6%. Meaning that if you bought a 10-year Treasury and you held it to maturity, the amount of money that you would make in interest would not beat inflation. It's actually a guaranteed loss. If you take inflation into consideration, the buying power that you would have. From the money that you put towards the bond today to the time that it pays back in 10 years, all the money that you would make off of those 10-year treasuries would not have beaten inflation. It would be better to spend the money now than it would be to buy a 10-year treasury and lose that purchasing power over 10 years. So the only reason why people even buy bonds right now is because they're speculating that the Federal Reserve is going to continue to lower interest rates. And if those yields on those 10-year treasuries drop and you own them at the time, you're going to make a profit on your bonds when you go to sell them. You are essentially buying them on speculation, not too far off from gold. Gold is a speculation. When you buy it, you are anticipating that you will be able to sell it to the greater fool for a bigger price. Just like Bitcoin, just like anything else. Real estate, all that stuff. When you buy it, anticipating that the price is going to go up, you are speculating. Investments are guaranteed a return. When you buy real estate, anticipating that you're going to rent the property out, you're going to get a rental income. When you buy the bonds, you are anticipating that they're going to pay an interest and get the income. When you buy dividend-paying stocks, you're anticipating on getting the dividend. Those are investments. When you buy Bitcoin, gold, or now bonds, the U.S. Treasuries, because the interest rates are so low, those things are speculations. Bonds kind of land right in the middle there because they still do pay an interest, but not enough to make it a real investment. They're still speculations. This is my opinion. So when you got Judy Shelton up in there and she's a hardcore gold standard advocate and she's pushing for lower interest rates, even pushing for a digital currency, that's leading me to believe that the price of gold is really going to shoot up. Especially when you have a hardcore gold standard advocate pushing those lower interest rates, she might even want to push them when they don't need to be lowered. Why? Because it causes the price of gold to go up. You see what's happening here? Silver today had over a 7% increase just today. We're at like 2160 an ounce. It was just a couple of months ago they were down in the teens. 
could hardly find it. The physical price of it was much higher. Like the spot, it's it's kind of interesting. If you're not a silver buyer, like if you don't go out there and invest in silver bullion, it's really kind of interesting to try and wrap your head around because you got spot price, but then everything else sells for so much more. And you wonder why it is that, you know, the spot price is so much lower than the physical price. Like you go to buy the physical and it's $20 an ounce, but the spot price was 15, had a $5 premium on it. It's because the demand for physical silver is much greater than the demand for the paper silver. There's over a hundred ounces of paper silver for every physical ounce of silver out there. That's crazy, guys. If all those people who own the paper silver cashed in their paper and started buying physical, you know what the physical price would be? It'd be off the charts. Even if you were to take it back to the 10 to 1 ratio as they pull it out of the ground from gold to, to silver, they pull gold out of the ground at a 10 to 1 ratio to silver. So for every ounce of gold, there's 10 ounces of silver. It trades at like 95 to 1. So if we were to take silver to that 10 to 1 ratio with gold, I mean, you're looking at $190 an ounce silver. Gold is reaching up. It's going to reach up and hit its all-time high. We're not that far away from it now. We're within sight. Silver, not even close. $21.50 an ounce. All-time high is $50 an ounce. Silver is incredibly undervalued. Even if you're paying a high premium on it. I mean, people were looking at silver not too long ago when it was at $15 an ounce spot price saying, I can't pay a $5 premium on it. Well, you would have paid $20 an ounce right now. It's at $21.50 an ounce. Silver is volatile. It moves, and it moves dramatically when it does. And when you see gold ticking up slowly and silver's just sitting there, it's only a matter of time and silver skyrockets. It usually outperforms gold when it does move, both to the upside and the downside. So I'm looking forward to Judy Shelton getting on the for, uh, the Fed Board of Governors. And uh, she has one more uh, Senate vote to go. This is the full Senate vote. And from what I understand, uh, according to the article, I'll leave a link down in the description, it looks like she can lose three Republican votes and all the Democrats and still make it. And I love the arguments that Democrats have for this. And I don't mean to pick on Democrats because I pick on Republicans too. I am not politically affiliated with either party. I am a mere, I, I watch. I'm a watcher of it. I have no love or hate for either party. Okay. But I like how Democrats, they use the argument that if Judy Shelton was in there with the gold standard, that the Federal Reserve would be limited on being able to provide loans to the people, right? And, I, and they don't say it quite like that. They say uh, it would hurt the working, working class out there. And I would only assume it's because if loans become more difficult to get, then getting into the house would be difficult. Getting a student loan would be difficult. Buying cars would be difficult. All these things would be difficult because you don't get a loan to do it. You have to come up and save the money, and saving in this day and age is very difficult, especially when you don't get an interest on your savings. It doesn't give you any reward for doing it. So yeah, I can understand that not having access to loans can be very difficult for people when you need that money, when you need to get the student loans, when you need to buy the house, when you need to buy the car. But the problem with it is, is that when you continue to drop these interest rates, you make those assets, those, those items that you're buying, ever more increasing in price, making it ever more difficult to achieve. You know, before all this stuff went down, there was all kinds of people out there talking about how the house prices were increasing faster than the cost of, than the, uh, than the wages are. That's, that's putting the houses farther and farther out of reach. Same thing with, you know, student, student loans, same going to, going to school. The prices are ever increasing out of reach. Forcing the people to take out ever bigger debts, having to pay, you know, over time ever more. I'm really interested to see what Judy Shelton does when she gets in there. I hope she does. I really hope she does. And I hope she takes interest rates into negative territory and I hope the price of gold goes through the roof and I hope we go back to a gold standard. I hope we start getting higher interest rates so I can actually get a return on my savings. 
I'm not taking out loans. I'm trying to be responsible. I know a lot of other people are out there too. And they are being punished every single day that these interest rates remain low. And they reward everybody out there who is going deeper into debt. Judy Shelton for the Fed Board of Governors. Uneducated economist. You guys let me know.